Hi everyone in Cloud Computing and welcome to episode 18 of the Cloud Computing Training Show with Brad Nelson, an internationally recognized and world's number one cloud industry expert and thought leader, David Linthicum. This show is sponsored by Nelson Hilliard, cloud computing recruitment specialist, placing great people in cloud, IoT, FinTech and AI. In this week's show, David and I will be talking about the fact that federal agencies with mandatory computer-based training or CBT are not focused on whether the training is actually relevant anymore. Hi Dave, great to see you and welcome back to another cloud computing training show. Yeah, thanks. This is an interesting topic. You know, this is something I, you know, came out with Federal News Radio covered this, uh, you know, a while ago, but you know, the problem is that uh, you know, um, you know, federal employees have to take a lot of departmental online training and that uh, it has a tendency to be excessive. And I think this is kind of comes down to the cloud computing stuff as well. So in other words, I author, I author cloud-based training, uh, and other people do as well. And we have Lynda.com and Cloud Guru, and you know things like that that are out there, and AWS as well as Microsoft as well as Google that are producing these training videos and things like that. And so, are we shoving these things as mandatory training down too much in terms of employees uh, that are that are dealing with it? So the federal government, you know, ran into this, and then so they're eliminating you know some of the mandatory training. Uh, because they, you know, don't view it as being productive to what they're looking to do, and I think that we have a danger of doing this in the cloud computing training field as well. We we could be pushing this at people, you know, that perhaps don't need it or perhaps are overwhelmed by the amount of information that we're putting at it. And so, a lot of organizations and a lot of uh, IT departments, when they hire people, they'll go ahead and set a course plan for them, and so they have to spend at least five hours to sometimes ten hours a week on computer-based training in order to meet the requirements. And they have deadlines to get this done. They have all these things they have to get this done. They have to pass with a certain degree of proficiency and they're tested on it, things like that. And so in essence, it's almost like they're going to school part-time continuously because we have this automated training, which is almost free. Uh, we're able to push it. The employees are able to take it. And I think it's very easy for the human resource departments and the IT departments and the compliance departments and the risk departments to, to push this training at people. And I th think we're probably overwhelming lots of folks and just spending too much time in doing CBTs and not enough time in the OJT on the job training. So what do you think as a recruiter? Look, I think you're, you're absolutely right. There's, you know, pushing training on people just for the sake of saying they've done the training just isn't really the right way to go, in my opinion. I don't think it's necessarily, you know, time best spent. Uh, you know, I think there really needs to be some form of process, uh, a consultative process of what the wants are by the individual and what their needs are and what outcomes they're looking for. And we've focused on this before on, you know, on certainly more than one occasion on these shows, you know, I'm very much driven by outcomes and, and what the, the wants and the needs are of the individual to equate to something that's going to make them happy. Uh, essentially, you know, it's, it, there's going to be a combination of things they have to do to be happy. Having training just for the sake of training with no clear uh, direction or clear understanding as to what the outcomes of that training will be or why they're doing it is, is not really going to sit very well, in my opinion. Um, so I think you're right. You know, there's a lot of training out there. There's a lot of um, uh, rabbit holes that people can fall down and, and waste, potentially waste time on that's not going to give them the outcomes they want. You know, there's plenty of, as we speak about those shiny objects, um, always on the horizon. You know, let's not, let's not you know, forget about the shiny objects because there, there may be one there that's the, the, that's the right one. But essentially, it's, it's identifying what that person wants out of the training as opposed to just uh, doing the training for the sake of of training. Uh, I'm sure you're, well, I, I know you agree on that one, uh, but yeah, I think uh, it's really sitting down with yourself or with a recruiter or someone that, that you know, that you've got a clear idea of, of where you want to be in the next year, two year, five year plan um, and, and why. Uh, and then look at training, then reverse engineer it and say, well, well, in that case, you need to do this sort of training. What are your thoughts on that, Dave? No, I think that's great. I mean, having a plan or some kind of a strategy in terms of why we're going to train people is, is absolutely the end game in this thing. I think that's spot on. I think the reality is, though, that uh, because of the cost of CBTs, computer-based training going, going way down, and because of everybody wanting everybody to be trained in everything, that, that it's going the opposite way. And so we're thinking very tactically and event-driven in, in looking at this. I mean, uh, you know, I was dealing with a client a while ago where, you know, they were requiring that not only did their, um, you know, th their cloud engineers be AWS certified, which is always good, 
since AWS is there, but they also become Google certified and Microsoft certified and IBM certified and Oracle certified and you know everything else, uh, even though those technologies weren't there because they want them to have the preparatory stuff. So if these technologies came in, that they would have the capabilities of leveraging. So it's kind of you know proactive training, you know, based on what we think may come versus what's actually here. And I, you know, found out that the engineers were overwhelmed because they were trying to, in essence, do their AWS projects and their AWS engineering certainly needed the AWS training. And they usually aced it when they went through it. But it was a distraction for them to go off in the Google way and the Microsoft way and the IBM way or whatever, you know, other technologies that were there because they couldn't quite keep everything in their head. And so they were overwhelmed with kind of understanding and dealing with this stuff. And they felt resentful of the fact that no one was really proactively thinking about how they were uh, spending their time and they're wasting their time, uh, you know, kind of according to them. That's kind of a quote unquote. So they changed it to become more uh, discretionary around a strategy, around some sort of career path. We had longer term management training they could take and tactical training around certain technical skills, but, you know, limited it to one CBT a week, you know, versus five, you know, which were taking way too much time. And also evaluate it with something that was going to be more meaningful to them. So instead of these tests that they take and either it's, you know, you get 70% and you move on or you get, uh, you have to retake the test over and over again. The ability to kind of look at what the, you know, training is able to do and perhaps, uh, you know, deal with mentoring and someone to actually deal with a human being who's actually helping you with the, you know, creating your first AWS project and monitoring it. So you're mixing CBTs with actually human interaction. So all these things are, are great ideas. I just think that this is one of the, the challenges is we're getting these great technologies, which computer-based training is. Uh, we have a tendency to kind of over-prescribe it, you know, very much like a new drug that came down the line. And we're creating people that are resentful and not necessarily productive around this stuff. So now's the time to start asking yourself, are you, you know, pushing CBTs too many times, you know, down employees and doing requirements so are they spending too much time doing these things versus actual work and they'd be able to kind of mix it and also this is adhered to a larger strategy for the company and also this is here to a larger strategy for the individual very well said you're right it's about it's about the focus of the organization playing to their strengths what they need you know straight away without that you know training overwhelm for the the individuals that are going to have to be called upon to implement things that aren't even in place yet so it really makes no sense from a, a cost point of view of, of of putting people through training that they're not going to be using and then you know getting poor training on the thing that they do need to use because they're being overwhelmed by other stuff that has no relevance to the organization so yeah it's just crazy i mean it's crazy it really is but it's a great point and 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 hopefully you know, larger companies will scale back a bit and give people that, that breathing space, which would be, I'm sure, um, refreshing for people that are trying to learn for the better of the organization, isn't it? And for the organization to make sure they're getting the value out of the training that they're using. Yeah, I, I think that's right. And I, I think ultimately that this is about matching the training up to the individual and doing custom training plans for the individual versus trying to force everybody into a round hole you know, if they're a square peg, um, people learn differently as well. I'm not a very good classroom, very good classroom learner. Um, so I learn, you know, via videos and uh, via watching things and actually doing things versus sitting in a classroom or watching a CBT. So there may be other ways that people want to train, you know, either they want to go off and, you know, build a project and work with an individual who actually is able to mentor them and provide some, uh, you know, more one-on-one -on -one based, uh, you know, based coaching, you know, versus looking at a CBT to gain the best, best piece of information. Cause I've asked questions to these CBTs and they never respond. So it's always a, you know, it's always a one way unidirectional thing. And I think this is where we need to kind of understand that we're dealing with humans and humans learn in different ways and they're, they're, they're taught in different ways and they perceive information in different ways. And also, uh, if we push things at them as a requirement, which is very easy to do with these CBTs, you get these CBTs on-demand training, you put the videos in line, you say all these employees are, are required to take this amount of training in this amount of time and pass with this amount of stuff, people get resentful. And they won't tell you, they'll just suddenly leave. And so suddenly, and I always tell people, when, when employees quit, it's them firing you. So that's... Uh, you should really look at it that way and take it, you know, take it that personally. 
And so if we're not, and, and typically if you're doing exit interviews, people feel the disenfranchised because people are pushing things at them without understanding what the requirements are, even if they give the feedback that this is not necessarily the way to go. So this is a way in which we can screw training up. We have lots of opportunities to leverage automation, leverage training based systems and all these other things that are part of these public cloud providers and you know professional training providers like lynda.com like i like i record for it but there's cloud guru and you know a bunch of others and just because it's easy to provide this training doesn't mean we should and i think we need to kind of quell our desires with it, actually the needs of the individual great article again and, and you know thanks for thanks for being on the show this week another great training show with lots of insight there so thanks again it's my pleasure so go take some training but don't take too much yeah not too much training everyone take what you need don't get greedy uh, well look thanks for watching everyone we really hope you enjoyed the training show this week uh, you can get david on twitter which is at david linthicum i'm on twitter which is at nelson underscore hilliard below in the description box um, there is a link to david's training on linda so have a look at that see what your thoughts are uh, some great courses there that david's uh, spent a lot of time on um yeah so thanks for watching remember to like comment and subscribe to the channel and also listen to the podcast as well so if you don't want to see david and i talking um, across the globe together on Skype, then you can obviously just listen to us instead. <laughs> Either way, you'll get lots of knowledge, we hope, uh, and enjoy the show. So uh, subscribe to that as well. So thanks for watching, everyone.